Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, madness has come to the Elder Scrolls Legends in 2019 and it's your boy Viki. For the first time, taking a look at these Isles of Madness cards. Guess guys, I have not been spoiled for all 52 cards revealed in this set. I've only seen a few things every now and then that people share to me on Twitter or that I see just randomly from other creators out there, but I have not seen the majority of the cards. I don't even know what the story is about. So let's just get in there, look at these cards, see my first impressions. Is this expansion gonna be amazing? Is it gonna change up the meta? Is it gonna be really make me wanna jump right back into Legend as somebody who's like basically a founder. I mean, like I have the title. I've been here since closed beta, so I need to know if this game 2019 is gonna make the big giant comeback of my time. Am I gonna be playing this game every single day like mad again? Well, let's go ahead and find out. As you guys can clearly see, I do kind of have a new setup right here. I'm finally back on camera. I know my last video I was only doing mobile videos, but I said, you know what? We have a new expansion. Let me get my camera out and I went ahead and tried a new feature where I'm able to remove the background without a green screen. So hopefully this is something a little bit new for you guys and new for me because I have done green screens before, but I think this is pretty decent without a green screen. So we'll test this out for now and let's go ahead and take a look at these new cards and see what they're all about. I haven't even gotten the DLC yet, but I know I should be able to see them by using a little icon right here. I know many of you guys out there have already seen these cards, so if you want to see my first impression and my overall thought as somebody who's been playing since close beta and wants to see this game continue on for the future, well, stick around. Probably going to be a long video. going to go through every single card and just give some quick thoughts. So let's start off right away with the strength cards right here and go from there. So what is this here? Ah, so we got like a two cards for one mechanic. Okay, that's pretty cool. Now I want to see the premium version of these. Oh, that is pretty damn cool. We got cloak and dagger. All right, yeah, of course, that kind of makes sense. It goes together. I mean, it should be all pretty sweet right here. Um, also, guys, please let me know about the audio quality. I'm back using my Blue Yeti and, the, like I said, the video quality with the green screen effect for my GPU. If everything needs to be adjusted, I will be able to adjust it. So cloak plus two, dagger plus one. So it's a one magical card. So it's one card that gives you two. So you play it, no, you have it, and it gives, okay, I guess, I guess you equipped it to a creature and they get both? I, I, I guys, like I said, I don't even, I didn't read up on all this. So I'm just assuming, I'm like, okay, you play this, yeah, you put it into play on a creature and they get both effects. That seems kind of beasty for, yeah, that seems kind of beasty. It seems pretty good. I'll take it. That seems very good. All right, let's see what tiny dragon. Summon, deal one damage to all enemy creatures in this lane. I like it. At a 1-1, one, one, I actually think this is going to be very fun. I, there's a lot of other cards that could synchronize with this already. I think the fact that it doesn't have to be destroyed like the spider card that we had before. So this is something I always do when I... um. When I like think about building decks and stuff, uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, fire spot spider last grab deal uh, one damage to all creatures in this lane. Like this definitely does have its uses, um, but because this effect is a last grass effect and not a summon effect, summon effects is something that I really like. Is uh, when you know when you just summon a monster, it gets on the field and it just does its thing. You know, it's really effective. Deal one damage. So like this is a, this is a type of card I would love to have in a deck using my good old vampire friend right here you got doom right here doom card so like using him right here in the combo with that is already something instantly i just thought about so this is how this video is gonna go like i'm gonna see these new cards and then my brain from all the way from back from closed beta to now it's just gonna think about oh like put this together make a deck so i'm already thinking of decks so like we're only two cards in and my brain is just already spinning and my smile is like this is good this is a good start my like, the smile on my face his cheeks are just like blowing up but that's what this game does to me at time, guys. Even though I was a while away for a while, I could always come back and have some fun. So, Tiny Dragon, I like it in concept so far. Let's keep on going. Bed Vile Scamp. All cre all cards cost a minimum of three. Of course. Okay, so this is a this is an interesting card actually. A minimum of three. So you can't have. So you wouldn't be able to reduce the costs of cards and take advantage of them. They have to cost three. That's it. That is a very defensive card, actually. This is a great card to use 
in a deck that you're actually playing with strength that's more of a control. Like this is this could lead to control strength deck. If, I, if I'm just thinking out loud right now, this take care of Northern Firebrands being zero cost to a charge where you could equip the items to them very easily. This is a very good control card in my opinion. Now maybe I'm looking at this wrong. Maybe I'm not seeing the full picture because I haven't seen all the other cards and thinking everything. But this seems like a very good card to have in a control scenario if you're playing a deck featuring control and strength. And maybe just have uh, give you a way to play longer games with st a strength deck. I mean, it's only one, you I mean, you only have three copies of it, but I definitely see uses for this card, especially as a counter to other really aggressive, low-cost decks like uh, Spell Sword. Like, you know, I, I, I see some ideas with this right now. Definitely see some ideas with this. This should be a fun to see what happens if I'm playing this and my opponent is, you know, playing a deck with Tullius. I know, like, Tullius, you know, when you, when you get that on the field... When you get all these zero cost, uh, not zero cost, those two cost creatures or less, they instantly summon from the deck. So that doesn't matter. I mean, it just instantly summons these cards from your, your your deck. But my um, but my idea for this though is because the opponent's gonna be playing so many of those two cost cards anyways, it's gonna probably hurt them because those cards are gonna cost a lot more. Just just a thought, just a quick thought. Of course, I didn't see the full. Uh, possibilities yet, but just a thought right now. Let's keep on going. All right, let's see what this one. At the end of your turn, unstable madman gains plus one one. And then, if he has five or more power, change him into unstoppable berserker. Okay, unstoppable berserker. Let's put unstoppable berserker. Uh, two two break uh breakthrough. At the end of your turn, if unstoppable berserker gains two two. Uh, 2 2 plus 3 costs. Oh, yeah. At the end of your turn, Unstoppable Madman gains plus 1 1. Okay. Then if he has. Unstoppable Berserker. Uh, turn. Okay, so that makes it a 7 7. Okay! Interesting card. You have to keep it alive long enough. My my thought with this card is not really its effect. You know, keeping it on the is how much are is how my opponents are going to deal with this card. Is this one of those cards that are going to be bait for me? If I have this in the deck, is my opponent going to waste cards removing it? it at, at the three costs, it's it, it's in a valuable spot in the aggro deck for me. Like it, that's the whole thing to it. Now this card might actually work out quite well with the card we just mentioned right here because. Scamp um, is going to make the matches last longer just because of the fact that, well, you know, everything's going to cost more for your opponents and you as well. So with that being said, maybe you could put these cards together because you'll have a better chance that your opponent would be able to use something like a Firebolt really easy. Like a Firebolt's going to cost three Magicka. Your opponent's not going to want to just waste three Magicka just to get rid of this one card right here. They may let, let this stay on the field a little bit longer. And it really actually... Might be fun to play with these, uh, this card, this card, and then my well, my second favorite card in the game, Cultist. Like, if you guys don't know, this is my second favorite card in Elder Scrolls Legends. I think it's such an underrated card overall. Uh, right here, Wither, where's my Cultist? Where are you, Cultist? Here you go. Withered Hand Cultist. My second favorite card in the game. I'm not saying it's the best card, I just think it's my second favorite card. And it's funny enough, as, as it, I have no... Premium copies of it. I don't know why I never got any. But either way, my second favorite card in the game. I think this card is very underrated and it's so useful in the right deck, especially when you're playing super aggressive because you don't really need actions and a lot of strength decks, especially if you're playing like Warrior. Oh, so so good, so good. Just kills your opponent's tempo if they're playing it with too many actions. But back onto the new cards. I could sit here and talk about cards for days. I have been out of the loop. Like I said, I haven't been playing rank much. I'm only rank nine right now. So that tells you right there how little rank I've been playing recently. So I don't know what the best decks are. I haven't been on Legends that's decks, really. So I really don't know what's the hotness or even the Reddit recently. All right, Drive Mad. A creature battles itself. Okay, there are definitely uses for this. As long as a creature could activate its effect, there are uses. Like if, if the creature damages itself and then gains a, gains its ability, like I already could think of a few cards right now that could um trolls. Like if we go over into the regular cards, this is not even like the best example of it in fact, but this is just one off the top of my head real quick. Like you know, frost troll, 
When Frost Roll takes damage, it gains that much power. You damage itself and gain plus one right there, you know? Something like that. I'm um, like this Grim. Well, no, you have to kill uh, right up here. Defiler, Defiler. If you want to kill yourself to summon another creature from the graveyard, sure. There's probably plenty of cards you could use this with. And I'm just thinking of the quick top of my head of some cards out there. But I'm sure there's plenty more. But let's keep on going because I'll be here for... This video is going to probably end up being... 30 minutes to 40 minutes long. I'm just gonna let you go, warn you guys now. You know, you guys could already see the watch time before me. Oops, I didn't need to click all these. Ah, back into the music. All right, Isles of Madness. Let's go ahead and press this. All right, let's go there. And let's go ahead with the premium one. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the free. I wanna see the premium versions. Let's go ahead. All right, we got a giant. Okay, if the giant takes damage, takes exactly one damage, destroy him. Oh, oh, okay. And this is not a positive effect in any way I could see. And I can't, I, at the top of my head, I can't think of a way to make good use of that effect. Other than if you need to kill a creature, one of your own creatures for some reason, easily kill one of your own creatures, I guess there are ways you could do it with Sharpshooter. You know, you could Sharpshooter this card, deal one damage, and kill it for an odd reason. I get the stats. The stats are not bad. 6-5. It's a pretty beefy card at turn 4. And, um... It doesn't get removed from curses. So, you know, like cards like curses are not dealing one damage. So, it curses it. So, that's not going to remove it. And it's it's an interesting card. I think it's actually a quite interesting card. Because some of the creatures that do exactly one damage, you actually kind of want to keep them alive. What I mean by that, like, let me go through the thought process I'm having right here. So, this is why I don't think that effect is that negative in the overall sense. Because... If you think about the cards that do get played, right? Let's, I'm, you guys are already passed one, but we're going to go forward. We're going to go forward first. We're going to go forward. Fifthly, the trade. And one of the most heavily played cards since the game has been out, right? Top tier card. I, very few people disagree with me on that. If you're going to be playing, a, you know, <laughs> an aggressive deck that likes to power the creatures up, this is a good addition in most decks. People will like taking this card out. It's a good bait card even. Like, people see this card, they use their executes, they use their lightness. You know, it's just a good card to have in a deck if you want to waste some of your opponent's um, actions or force them to play an action, get rid of it. And if they don't get rid of it, you take advantage of it. It's just one of those cards I like and I have to a lot of decks. So, this is the type of card that... Even though it only has one attack, and you could use one to attack and kill the giant, most players want to keep this alive. So it's like, man, do I do I really want to use this to kill the giant? And you might end up having to. Like I said, you might just end up having to in that situation. Now let's go back. Another card that seen some play here in that Blood Pack Messenger. You, you, you don't play Blood Mass pack messenger to take out a card like that so it's like uh okay now here's a situation where the card mark man actually is somewhere in a good counter to this card because mark man is a card that you usually put out there to get out pit lion but you can put out mark man and i'm pretty sure you'll be pretty okay losing mark man to take him out uh scouting patrol cards you know like you know these cards right here well imperial grunts you'll be fine doing that right there so those are not a big that much of a big deal losing there but there are some of the other cards out there that cost is one it's not the best trade in the world to lose it to that. Um, Brutal Ashlander, yeah, that's a fair enough trade because you still get to do uh, one damage. This card, I don't see too many people play it this day. I used to play this a lot, but I don't play it that much. But of course, I could keep going and going through one cost cards. But it's just my thinking that it might stay. That giant might stay alive a lot more than I really am thinking. I was thinking initially. It could be pretty much fine if you just. If you're a newer player and you don't have a lot of other legendary cards, a lot of better made cards to put in your deck, I think this is a good beginner card. Like, truthfully, this is the type of card I like making decks around for new players because it's not going to cost too much. Because if you guys go, go to it again, let me go to it. It's only a rare card. It's not a legendary. It's not an epic, you know. 
epic card or nothing like that. So with that being said, as it's only a rare card, it's not going to be cost too much to summon. So you can put this in a budget deck and actually play pretty well at rank 12, rank 11. I could, I could see this being in the decks. Call me crazy. I may be wrong with that. I really actually want you guys' opinion on this card. Uh, it seems weird that I'm focusing so much on one of the weirder cards out there, but I always like cards like these that are in this weird situation where I don't think nobody in rank, you know, in the top ranks are going to be playing this heavily, but I think in the lower ranks, this could be actually be very viable, especially if new players start picking up the game now with this new expansion plus story. Let's keep going. All right, uh, Trouble Seeker. Hmm. Summon. Battle an enemy creature when Trouble Seeker takes damage. He deals that much damage to you. Okay. Another card with a tricky ability. So, the summon effect is fine. It's a positive. You summon him, he deals with battles of enemy creature. Cool. Great. A lot of ways to get use, uses out of that. There's lots of cards that could be already unplayed on the field that you could take a lot of advantage, give him items, power him up, fifth beat in training, could make him a four or five, take out a creature at a five cost. Cool. It's, om it's not, the, not the same thing as charge because you can't attack face, but it could be used as a removal in orcs. Now, the cost here is the magical. It's not even a negative thing. This is when Trouble Seeker takes damage, he deals that much damage to you. Sure. That's a negative, but the thing about it is, eh, it's not the biggest deal in the world. I personally think for something that is five magicka and has five health and has charge. That's just my, I mean not charge, has a summon battle. I don't think that's that much of a negative, and I guess this is how the Isle of Madness's card is going to be. And I'm sure somebody out there is going to figure out a way to use that to their advantage, like breaking a rune by playing this in a prophecy deck. Like if you're playing this in a prophecy deck, you take in that damage is now gonna take, if you take three damage that breaks a rune, well, you you might just get yourself a prophecy card. So that could be a possibility for, and a combo for you. Now, the thing about this though, is if you're playing a orc deck, I actually don't think this is gonna go very well in orc decks. There's just so much other cards that I wanna put in the five magic a spot that it feels so risky playing this. Now, once again, I'm gonna have to see how everything else goes. I might try it out in an orc deck, but I just don't feel like I'm gonna be playing this very heavily in an orc deck. I might be wrong though. I might be wrong. It has its places elsewhere. Let's see what it's summoning. This lane becomes a Dementia. Dementia. Okay, let's see what that is. Alright, at the start of each player's turn, if you have the creature with the highest power in this lane, deal three damage to your opponent. Wow! At the start of each player's turn. Wow. So whoever has the highest damaging creature just deal. Okay, already have just fun. Who cares? Probably won't even work out. But just instantly reading that effects makes me want to combo it with this lovely card right here. Oh, you guys will know it. <laughs> World Eaters Irie. Like, come on. Like, whether it's a good deck, whether it's... It's fun. Now, you know me at this point, playing this game this long, it's about having fun. So, you know I'm already going to make a deck where that lane condition with this. Like, I just got to see if I can pull it off. Even if those the big creatures get don't get to attack if they keep getting shackled, but I'm going to have such powerful creatures out that just my points keep on taking three damage. And if you want to be real stupid with it, like, I really wouldn't recommend this because you can super kill yourself with this. I made a deck a few months ago playing um, Gladiator's Arena, but... Uh, they nerfed Gladiator Arena a while back to make it four Magicka instead of three. But back when it was three, man, it was so much fun playing with this. And I used to run three of them in a deck. <laughs> Not anymore. But yeah, you could combo all that together and see how it runs. I'm interested to see how many cards have that effect. Once again, you guys probably know all this stuff. And I'm just seeing it for the first time now. Alright, let's keep going. Guard, 5-5. Five, five. Summon. Uh, your opponent discards the highest cost action in their hand. Counter. It's a counter card. Simple. I like cards with summon effects. I, I love guards with summon effects. And this is a good summon effect. It's a costly card. It definitely is. But, like I said, this is a type of card that could be in a 
a, you know, a strength deck that has plain control. If you're playing control, if you're playing a little bit slower, trying to just have fun or do something specific, sure, this could be end up in your deck. Not everything has to be aggro with strength for sure, so I like it. I'm not sure how much I'm going to play it, but I see its value. In fact, I see its value really heavily in tournaments. Like, I know the tournaments, we still haven't gotten tournament tools in the game yet, but still, if you know if you know ahead of time, you know, if you get the idea what your opponents are going to play, or if you know what your opponents, like, you know, if they're a streamer or something, and you know what type of cards they like, decks they like to play, action heavy, this could be a good counter that. As you guys see me play, I've been on a crusade to use less and less action, which I guess kind of makes sense, seeing as... Withered Hand Cultist is my second favorite card. So I try to make decks these days that have as few actions as necessary. I want to keep my opponent overwhelmed with creatures. I want my opponents to have to use Ice Storms. I only have to use the, the you know, Dawn's Wrath to clear a whole entire lane. I, that's my whole my thing. Summon a creature, it summons another creature. Summon a creature, it gives me another effect. That's what I kind of do. Or if I have to have actions, it's actions that power up my, my whole entire deck. Or power up my few creatures in my hand. Something like that. That's a lot of decks or item decks. I, oh man, I've been starting playing Item Slay again. And that's actually my my thing I'm really anticipating with this expansion. I really hope I could make some new items decks. Like, I really do. Like, I've been playing this. All right. Let's move on. Uh, let me just check and make sure that everything actually is recording. Because, like I said, it's been such a long time since I recorded a video that I would not be surprised if I made a mistake somewhere. <laughs> And then press record. But let's keep going. It looks like this. At the end of your turn, if Gardener Harvest is in your hand, it changes into ran into a random item and keeps this ability. Good. Good card. It could be useful, especially in uh, Unite the House. What the hell is that damned card? It's a card I think I've only played ever once. The win condition when you have all the attributes out. Uh, I think it's a three card, a three cost. Ah, unite the houses. Oh, I was right. Yeah, unite the houses. I've only had the win condition with this once, and I was just messing around. The people who could win with this, and just consistently, great. This is the one win condition in the game that just feels to me takes too much effort. Like. And I'm an RNG guys, as you know, guys. I'm okay playing RNG decks, but even me, I'm like, oh man, a little too much luck, a little too much. I, I if I want to be playing something like this, you might as well give me my boy right here. Where is he? Seven Magica. My boy. House Carl. Well, not House Carl, but yeah, there he is. Oh my fucking god. Why did I click so much things? Yeah. Jarl. So, yeah. like I I mean, you could obviously put them in the same deck. Obviously. But, you know, if I'm going to play memes like that, I prefer play with him. So, I've gotten his win condition a few times. All right. Let's get back to the new cards because I keep on just talking for days. I probably should have just did this in a stream. But uh, I'll probably have this actually be a premiere so you guys can watch it along with me. That way it's almost like a stream. Let's go. Okay, draw an item from your of your choice from your deck. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yes. 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 Two Magicka. Draw an item of your choice from your deck. What? This is immediately black. What? This is immediately going in item slay. Oh my god. This is gonna be so great. Like I can't wait to use this. With so many damn cards. I'm going to be drawing out them Dragon Priest Mass. I'm going to be drawing out them Shackles. The, oh my goodness. And then when you combo it up as well. With my good old pal right over here. Not Gardener Sword. Master Swordsmith. She is going to be very viable. For item decks. Very, very vital. Now unless I'm missing something. She seems very useful. At least for me. Alright. Zero... Like, zero one for this ability is not a disadvantage. Like, if this was an action, I would play it. But the fact that it's a creature makes it so much better because now you have a creature on the field that you could equip the items to. Because one of the biggest disadvantages of item decks is that you have to have creatures to equip them to. Like, there's only one item in the game that you could use 
I think that's the only one that you could use without it actually being equipped to a creature. And if you guys don't know which one that is, I wouldn't be surprised if you're a new player because almost nobody really plays it anymore. And that item is right there. Spear of Embers. Like, you know, this card right here is the only item I think I can think of off the top of my head that you could use without equipping it to anything. Anybody. So, besides this, though, she's going to be useful. All right. Let's get back into Isles of Madness. I have a lot of fun with these discussion videos rather than just play matches too. Let me know what you guys think about stuff like this. I will do more discussions all the time. Um, okay. When your opponent, uh, when you summon a creature with six costs or more, both Lozerat, I'm, I'm horrible with names, so sorry. And that creature gain plus two, two. Uh, of course, eight. I mean, obviously, this is an instinct eight magicka combo. Like, you put this down and put down a creature that costs six. Bam, get the effect. But I think she's a good card because she's not. Oh, she is unique. Oh, damn. She has a unique. Oh, I didn't sit there for a second. See, that's how, that's how long I haven't played that much because, like, you know, I've got the, the borders changed and, yeah, the unique things up here. Damn, if you could have three copies of this, it would be super powerful. But as an orc that costs two, I think she's okay. I think she is okay. I will have to go ahead and play her myself to really test this out. And if you guys wonder why I keep looking this way, I'm just so used to my mic, my camera being that way instead of this way. So my, my camera's in a new place, so it's just unusual. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting card. I'm going to have to try that out. Prophecy Guard. When a pointy wall of spikes takes damage from a creature, it deals that much damage to that creature. I mean, makes sense. Cool little effect right here as well. I'm not too sure what decks I'm going to put this in yet. I'm just going to say I have to wait and see. I there's nothing came to my mind instantly when I saw this, but... There definitely will be uses, like especially if this thing has lethal lethal on it. So if you get this lethal, get this strong enough, sure. <laughs> I mean, the fact that it deals the same amount of damage to your opponent means that if your opponent has more attack than their health, then, you know, they could kill themselves as well. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see with that one. Okay, another double card. What the heck is this about? Manic Jack. Okay. When Manic Jack gains a keyword, he gains plus one one. That could go into my Royal Sage deck. Sure. Probably wouldn't be the most effective thing, but I could see it being fun. Could be played in uh, you know, Monday Stone deck. Meme Stone, as I like to call it, Meme Stone deck. Alright. It gets so you tell me about uh give a friendly creature a random key oh wow. I really should have looked ahead of time because obviously I'm thinking about Royal Sage. This thing instantly becomes a 4 4 with a keyword. Right? Like, is this a three magical card that gives? Or is it. Oh, wait, or am I thinking this wrong? Okay, okay. You play this Manic Jack and then you get this in your hand? Is this how this mechanic works? I'm so sorry I don't know, guys. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. Like I, I just don't know. I don't know if it's, you automatically play Manic Jack and then this activates, or is it like you play Manic Jack and then you get this in your hand and you have to play it from hand? I'll, I'll, I'll wait and see. I'll wait and see. Interesting card for sure. <laughs> Shackle creatures. Um. Oh, let me see. Icy Shambles. <laughs> let me just drink some water if you don't mind, guys. Oh, it's empty. All right, um, shackle creatures, uh, uh, damage by icy shambles. Okay, uh, summon, deal two damage to a creature. Okay, more shackle. Don't have a specific deck I'm gonna throw this into it, but if you guys know me, shackle is one of the key mechanics in this game. I have won so many games because of shackles, so many games because of shrieking harpy. So I'm all for this card. And I'm all for this card, even a little bit more because of its um, cost. I mean, its attack being a two magicka 
actually makes it super valuable to resummon with our boy, the Necromancer of Choice these days. Bam!